Today, I thought I would get on and I would talk about a topic that uh, I, every time I teach a class, no matter where it is in the world, I always bring up this subject because it's the fundamentals of who you are. And so what I want to talk about today is what has kept you, what has stopped you from becoming wealthy and living your dreams? Amazon business owners and soon to be Amazon business owners. Bob Schneck with you today. I am super, super excited to be here and I want to congratulate you for taking time out of your life to listen to this video. Uh, I felt the need to make this one today. Now, for those of you that I've had the opportunity to meet, uh, hi, good to see you again. I'm glad that you're here with us today, continuing that education. For those of you that I haven't had the opportunity to meet, my name's Bob Schneck, and I want to give you a little bit of my background. Uh, I have been selling successfully online for over 20 years, almost since Amazon has been in existence. Now, for the last five years, I have dedicated my life to learning how to sell effectively and successfully on Amazon so as to be able to create true Amazon businesses. And over the last two years, I have had the phenomenal opportunity. I joined forces with a group of Amazon selling experts and business experts called Algo Online Retail. And over the last two years, I have had the opportunity to literally travel the world and teach individuals just like you how to build effective and successful Amazon businesses. Now, understand what I just said. I didn't say how to sell products on Amazon. Now, that's a part of it, but I, I believe anybody can show you how to sell products on Amazon. There's a big difference between selling products and running an Amazon business, using the power of the Amazon platform to scale your business to the point where this Amazon business is a proven path to financial freedom and living your dreams. Now, today I thought I would get on and I would talk about a topic that uh, I, every time I teach a class, no matter where it is in the world, I always bring up this subject because it's the fundamentals of who you are. And so what I want to talk about today is what has kept you, what has stopped you from becoming wealthy and living your dreams? So I've got a list here that I've compiled from a lot of students from around the world, and I'm just going to go through one by one. And the idea is to, to let you see that you're not alone and that there are ways to overcome all of these issues. So let me shrink my picture down a little bit, and we'll just go ahead and jump into this. Now, the very first thing that I hear from a lot of people is what stopped them from being wealthy is simply their lack of knowledge or education. Uh, now, let me ask you a question. It's a kind of a trick question. Is knowledge power? Answer, no. <laughs> okay, now let me explain. I know we've all been taught knowledge is power, but let me give you a little reality check. Some of the absolute smartest people that I know that have the most letters and degrees after their name are truly the brokest people I know. Because knowledge is not power until you apply the knowledge, right? Education without application is really nothing more than entertainment. And uh, truth is, I'm not that funny. Now, is education expensive? I guess it depends on the type of education. If you're going to go the, uh, the, the road of, of uh, you know, typical uh, uh, college or university education, uh, can it be expensive? Absolutely. I think it costs like 40 grand a year to go to Harvard. Uh, so very, very expensive. Now, one time, uh, speaking of Harvard, I watched an interview with the president of Harvard, and he was asked the question, don't you think 40000 a year to attend Harvard is expensive? And he looked at the interviewer and said, son, if you think that's expensive, you ought to try ignorance. In other words, the lack of education uh, is actually more expensive than the cost of education. Now, there's also the school of hard knocks, right? Uh, that's, what the, that's what the DIYers, the do-it-yourselfers live by. And, and that road, believe it or not, it might not cost very much monetarily, but it's super expensive in mistakes and lost opportunity. Uh, I taught a class one time in London, and I had a student 
talk to me about this very thing. And he says, I'll tell you a mistake that I made. He says, I got online and I wanted to sell watches. So I got, uh, got onto a website called Alibaba. And if you want to know my opinion of Alibaba, I have a whole nother video. It's titled uh, How to Find Suppliers. So you might want to check that one out. But what he was looking for was a watch supplier. And he found one overseas, contacted them, and they negotiated that he was going to purchase from this person a box of Rolex watches for $10,000. And you probably already know where the story is going. The gentleman sent the $10,000, he got his box of watches, and when he opened them up, he found out, well, his term was, there must have been a communication barrier because I thought I was buying Rolexes, and instead, the guy sent me Rolexes. So is that an expensive education? Yeah, that's $10,000 flushed down the toilet. Uh, so education is expensive, but if you have the right education and you have the willingness to apply that education, it comes back to you 10 times, 100 times. The next reason that I hear people talk about all the time is fear. Uh, would you admit that you've missed out an opportunity or two simply because of fear? Uh, I'm the first to admit it. Uh, fear has, has stopped me in many, many occasions. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'll, I'll give you a, a sort of an example. Uh, years ago, I, I got involved with some real estate and I had done a great deal. I was 23 or 24 years old. My very first deal, absolutely an amazing experience, made some great money and it gave me quite a bit of confidence. So what I did is I went out and put together another package and this package I thought was absolutely brilliant. I didn't have the money to do it. And at that time in life, I didn't know how to raise money. So I went to my mentor and I showed him my project and he was like, oh, Bob, that is a genius plan. He said, I would love to do it. He says, I just, my, all my money's out right now. And I said, yeah, you know, kind of same thing with me. That's too bad. He goes, he goes, that's not a problem. He says, I can get you money tomorrow. He says, money is the easiest thing in the world to find. And at that point in life, I didn't really understand how true that was. So what he did is he put me in touch with a friend of his who happened to be what's called a hard money lender. Uh, often referred to as loan sharks or the mafia. And uh, I went and met with this guy and I presented my real estate package. And when I was done, you could just tell how excited he was. He's like, oh my gosh. He says, Bob, that's brilliant. Absolutely. He says, I will give you whatever you need. And I'm thinking, wow, it is easy to find money. And I said, great. At what rate? And he kind of looked at me and going, oh man, I don't know. I don't know. He goes, I shouldn't do this. He says, but I want in so bad. He goes, I'll do it for 33%. And I said, 33%, are you nuts? I said, that's highway robbery, 33%. I said, look, bud, just because I'm young doesn't mean I'm dumb. And I got up and I stomped out of the room and I slammed the door, 33%, who was he fooling? And I went back to my mentor and I told him this entire story. And I was bought, when I was done, he was like, Bob, you're such a fool. I'm like, what are you talking about? He wanted to charge me 33% interest. And he looked at me and he goes, so what? I said, 33% interest, that's highway robbery. He goes, Bob, let me ask you a question. He said, if you had done that deal, how much money would you have made? You know, and I thought for a second, I said, I probably would have put about a million dollars in my pocket, free and clear. And he just goes, oh, you're such a fool. I'm like, why? What are you trying to teach me? And he said, Bob, why do you care what he makes? because you weren't willing to let him make what he thought was fair, it robbed you of the opportunity of making a million dollars. He says, you have a consumer mentality. He said, until we can change that, he says, you're never gonna get wealthy. He said, you have to stop thinking like a consumer and start thinking like a business owner. See, to a business owner, it doesn't matter what the cost is. What matters is what the return is. He said, so who cares if he makes 33% if you're gonna make a million dollars? And that was a very powerful lesson in my life. And he says, Bob, let me tell you what the real problem is here. He says, you're afraid. And I'm like, I am not, I'm not afraid. He says, yes, you are. He says, you walked away from that deal because you were afraid. He said, and until we can change this, he says, you're never gonna get where you want to be. So he sat me down and taught me a really amazing lesson. And I would actually recommend you do this sometime. So he sat me down, he gave me a piece of paper and a pen. And he says, I want you to write down the most amazing moments of your life. And I said, okay, starting when? 
He goes, as far back as you can remember. And I had to chuckle at myself because the very first thing I wrote down was my very first kiss. Greatest moment of my life. Now, I don't really remember the girl, and I apologize if, <laughs> if you know who you are, but I remember the kiss and how amazing it was. And then I wrote down things like riding a bike for the first time and riding a motorcycle and jumping off of a cliff and, 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 and getting married, right? And having child. And I wrote all these amazing things. I, I have had a blessed life. And when I got done, he goes, wow. He says, you have really led a blessed life. I'm like, I know, I'm pretty grateful. And he says, now sit back down and he hands me a highlighter. And he says, I want you to highlight every item that you will admit was preceded by fear. So I started to highlight. And that very first item, the, the, the very first kiss, I can't tell you how terrified I was, right? And so I started highlighting and I started highlighting. And when I was all said and done, take a wild guess how many items were highlighted. That's right, every single one. And he looked at me and he says, see Bob, fear precedes greatness. He said, and you have to understand that and stop, stop running from fear and start running towards fear. He looked at me and he says, because if you're gonna spend your life running from fear, he says, you're gonna miss out on the absolute greatest moments of your life. Now, I tell you that story because of this one experience. Um, I remember when my wife was pregnant. Uh, I happened to be in New York City doing some, some meetings. Uh, I'm 3,000 miles away from her. She's eight months pregnant. And uh, all of a sudden, the guy that I'm with walks up to me and hands me a little post-it note. And on the post note, it said, your wife's water broke. You know, and I looked at him and I'm like, well, tell her to fix it. She's a big girl. And he kind of looked at me like I was nuts. And uh, then I got done and we took a break and he walked up to me. He said, tell her to fix it. What are you talking about? He says, that means your baby's coming. And I looked at him. And I said, that's not possible. It's not due for another month. So he kind of looked at me and said, whatever. So I called my wife and I'm like, what's going on? You know, I'm in the middle of this meeting and, and one of my guys came up to me and handed me a note, said, your water broke. She goes, yeah, my water broke. I'm on the way to the hospital. I said, I don't understand. What does that mean? And she says, it means the baby's coming. And I'm like, it, that's not possible. It's not due for another month. And she goes, well, it decided to come today. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. Today, I don't believe it. Uh, uh, uh. And the first thought that popped into my brain was, just wait, I'll be right there. Now, I'm 3,000 miles away in New York and she's on her way to the hospital and I say, just wait. So I walk up in front of my, my group and I say, hey guys, sorry, gotta go, uh, water broke. And I raced down to the lobby, caught a taxi to the airport, hopped on a plane, flew home. My brother picked me up. He took me to the hospital. And, and I got there and I walked into the weirdest thing I've ever seen in my life. Dark room. There's my wife in this weird contraption. There's this doctor where he probably shouldn't be. And he looks up at me and gives me a total crusty look. And then he looks at my wife and just says, can we go now? <laughs> she waited 10 hours for me to show up. Can you believe that? And two minutes later, bam, there it was. And they walked over to me and they put this thing in my arms and I looked at it and I'm like, what am I supposed to do with it? You know, do if I drop it, does it break? I have never been more terrified in my entire life as a new father. But I can honestly tell you, out of that experience has come one of the greatest things in my entire life. I will never run from fear. I understand now and know in my heart that fear is a predecessor to greatness to come. So my challenge to you would be to get everything you deserve in this life, you need to stop running from fear and start running towards fear. I love this quote from Mark Twain. I've had thousands of problems, most of which have never happened. How true is that? Lack of action. Have you ever heard the term analysis paralysis? Man, oh man, I run into that so much. As I get a chance to teach people around the world, you just run into those people that sometimes just want to analyze and overanalyze and overanalyze. And I have a lot of tremendous mentors in my life that have taught me many, many great things. Uh, and, and one of them deals with this concept of analysis paralysis. And the thing is, is that my mentors can teach me everything in the world, but until I'm willing to take action and pull the trigger on that, it's all meaningless. As a matter of fact, let's talk, since we're here about Amazon, let's talk about Jeff Bezos. I watched a, a, a documentary or a show on him, an interview actually. And I don't know if you know this, but he recently purchased the, uh, uh, the Washington Post. 
And in the interview, he was asked, hey, understand you bought the Washington Post. He's like, yeah, I did. Uh, and he says, so what do you know about newspapers? And his answer was, well, not a whole lot. Well, why did you buy it, Jeff? Well, you know, I interviewed the guy that was running it. He seemed pretty smart. I looked at the books. They seemed pretty good. And, and so I bought it. He said, I have a philosophy. He said, and my philosophy is this. When I look at an opportunity and I weigh it out and I see that the odds are in my favor, meaning 51%, he says, I pull the trigger and take action. Because the problem is, is that people wait to be 100% sure about things. And it's never going to happen. It's an excuse not to take action. So I now live by this. When I look at an opportunity and, and, and I weigh it out and the odds are 51% in my favor, now it's time to pull the trigger and take action because that's how you're going to get. You cannot be afraid of failure because from failure becomes better starts and greater beginnings. Oh, also, there's a book out there that I recommend that I think is absolutely phenomenal. It's called Blink. And uh, amongst other things in this book, they talk about a common denominator of the very, very successful people, people that we all admire. And one of the common denominators that successful people have that others don't is the ability to make a decision, right or wrong, right? The ability to make the decision. Because you've all heard it before, the best thing you can do in life is the right thing. The second best thing you can do in life is the wrong thing. But the worst thing you can do in life is nothing. Because from nothing, nothing changes. Even from our failures, we become better and greater. So don't be afraid to take action. Number four, dream stealers, naysayers. We all have them, right? And most often they have our same last name. Uh, it's kind of funny how that works. But my point to that is, is one of my mentors taught me years ago. He said, Bob, when it comes to dream stealers and naysayers, you need to understand it's your life, it's not theirs. And unless that person is willing to take on all of your responsibilities, they have, they have nothing to say about what you do in your life. More often than not, the dream stealers are just afraid that you're going to leave them in the dust. He said, but this is your life and your responsibility is to you and your family and you need to make the decisions. Don't let other people. And it's always funny how we, we as humans have a tendency to go to people that we shouldn't go to for advice. You know, you walk into a bar, you eavesdrop on the person next to you, and there's always a couple of broke guys sitting there at a table, and they're talking about how to get rich. Well, let me tell you something. You can't get rich talking to somebody that's broke. It just doesn't work, okay? Now, excuses. This is, this is, a, this is, a, this is a powerful one. Uh, we all have them, as you all know, right? Excuses. So let me give you kind of an example. Um, one of my mentors years and years and years ago, uh, I, what, I found myself knocking on his door one day and I said, and he was super successful. I mean, super, super successful. And I said, sir, I'd like you to teach me how to be wealthy. And he looked at me and he kind of thought funny and he's like, well, all right, come on in and sit down. Now, I don't know if he invited me in because, you know, I had recently lost my father and he kind of felt bad, had pity on me, or he invited me in because at the moment I was dating his daughter and he was actually worried. Uh, but he sat me down and we spent about four hours together, four of the most amazing hours of my life, talking about principles, fundamental truths about how to create wealth in life. And, and when we we're done, I'm like, oh, sir, thank you. Thank you. You've changed my life. You've changed my life. And I walked out and I did absolutely nothing. Not a thing that he taught me to do. And a couple months later, I found myself knocking on his door again. I said, hi, sir. I'd like you to teach me how to be wealthy. And he looked at me kind of weird. He's like, well, I, I guess. All right, come on in. So he invited me in. And this time we only spent about two hours together. Again, amazing wisdom of the world. Okay. Two hours together. When we were done, I said, sir, thank you. Thank you. You've changed my life. And I walked out and I did nothing. Nothing that he taught me to do. Now that happened five times over the course of a year. And on the sixth time when I knocked on his door, he met me at the door and he just said, stop. We're done. He says, five times you've knocked on my door, five times I've told you what you needed to do to become wealthy, and five times you've walked out of here and done nothing. He says, I'm done. We're over. And I looked at him. I said, sir, but you don't understand. Don't you, don't you understand? Well, I mean, where's your empathy? Where's your sympathy? I lost my father, right? I lost my job. Uh, I, I lost my home. I was in the hospital. Uh, I, I mean, I had I, everything. I said, where's your sympathy? And he looked at me and he goes, Bob, I don't care. 
And I thought to myself, how rude, how horrible that you don't care. Where's your empathy? Where's your sympathy for what I've been through? And then he looked at me, he says, Bob, I can't care. He says, if I continue to care, I'm going to continue to give excuses to live in your past. He says, I'm sorry your dad died. He says, I'm sorry you lost your home. I'm sorry you were in the hospital. I'm sorry all these bad and terrible things have happened to you. He said, but get over it. It's done. Nothing you can do will change it. He says, until you're willing to, to stop, and draw a line in the sand and stop with the excuses of your past. He said, nothing will change in your life. And I looked at him and I said, okay, I get it. I understand. No more. I've drawn the line in the sand. Please, one more time. And he thought, and then he says, okay, you can't come to my office. He says, but here's my last piece of advice. In this life, you only have two choices. Two choices, that's it. And which one you choose will determine whether or not you spend your life living your dreams or you spend your life struggling. And I'm like, all right, give it to me. And he looked at me and he says, you can choose to make money or you can choose to make an excuse of why you can't. You cannot do both. It's one or the other. And until you're willing to draw the line in the sand and stop with the excuses, nothing in your life will change. One of the most powerful pieces of advice I have ever received in my entire life. And I would challenge you to draw a line in the sand and stop with the excuses. You can have whatever you want in this life if you're simply willing to stop with the excuses and go grab it. I love this quote. The only thing standing between you and your goal is the bullshit story you keep telling yourself as to why you can't achieve it. Time. Another one of the excuses that I hear all the time, why can't you do this? Why aren't you wealthy? Oh, I'm too, I don't have the time. I'm too busy. Well, what are you busy doing? I don't know, I'm just busy, busy, you know, right? People are just busy being busy. It's the craziest thing in the world. And I'm here to tell you, if you're thinking you don't have the time to start down this Amazon pathway and build an Amazon business for yourself, then you probably need it worse than any person listening right now. So here's my advice. If time is of a problem for you, then what you need to do is you need to sleep an hour less every day. Get up an hour earlier, go to bed an hour later. I don't care. But until you find that time to do this, nothing is ever gonna change. And it won't get better. It's just gonna get busier. So today, make a commitment. Hour a day, get up an hour earlier, go to an hour bed, or out, go to bed an hour later. Uh, at least do that for a few months. And that way you can establish a foundation for your Amazon business, start to generate some income, and then you can start to pay other people to do the things that are keeping you busy. You've all heard that saying, right? If you want a job done right, no. If you want a job done right, pay somebody that's great at it to do it for you, okay? Don't do it yourself. See, what we wanna do is we wanna create a lifestyle for ourselves and we have to learn how that process takes place. Time, again, an hour less a day. Lack of a system or plan. I hear this all the time. Well, I'm not wealthy because I don't have a plan. I don't have a system. And you know what? I, I understand that. I do agree. But that's not an excuse. And that's not a reason not to be wealthy. Because I can show you a plan, a proven pathway, a plan to creating true wealth in your life so you, using Amazon as a vehicle to make it happen. And again, all you need to do... Oh, by the way, let me bring this up. I will be holding uh, this week a free hour, hour and 15 minute webinar where I will be showing you a proven model, business model for not just selling products on Amazon, but learning how to build Amazon businesses to create a foundation that can take care of you and your family and generations to come. So if you do want to attend, I would challenge you to do so. Uh, down below, there is a link that you can register for that workshop. I do want to warn you, I don't do these all the time. And when I do do them, they fill up and, and, and sell out. That's not the wrong right word, but they fill up every time. So the sooner you get registered and lock up your seat, the sooner it's gonna be, uh, the better it's gonna be for you. And then finally, money. Uh, money's a big excuse that I get all the time of why people aren't wealthy. Why well, don't have the money to be wealthy? Uh, does it take money to make money? 
Absolutely. Don't anybody tell you different. If they're telling you that it doesn't take money, they're lying to you. Now, the magic behind this, though, it takes money to make money, but it doesn't necessarily have to be your money. See, one of the things that I've become quite efficient at is learning how to secure OPM, other people's money. I told you I'm part of a group of individuals who are Amazon selling experts and business experts. Part of my expertise is teaching them how to acquire funding for their Amazon business, how to use OPM. Now, I do have a whole nother set of videos where I talk about different ways to raise capital for your Amazon business. So again, let's not let that be an excuse. Now, do you all know who this guy is? Warren Buffett, arguably one of the greatest investors on the planet, one of my personal mentors in life. And uh, I want to share with you a quote, okay? And this is how we're going to wrap this up today. Anyone who does not become wealthy according to their own standards, it is not because the world has not given them the chance, but rather it's because you have not given yourself the chance. Warren Buffett. I am here to tell you the world is full of opportunity. You have to have a mindset of abundance and not a scarcity mindset. The world is full of opportunities. Opportunities come by your plate every minute of the day. But the difference between those that live their dreams and those that spend their life struggling and making excuses is your willingness to take action. You have to have the courage to go out there and grab what is rightfully yours. You have the opportunity, you have the chance. What we have in front of us right here is one of the world's greatest opportunities that have ever come by in our lifetime. The Amazon platform is at its infancy. We are at the right place at the right time right now. All we need to do is have the courage to reach out and grab our piece of the pie. So I would challenge you to become wealthy, challenge you to live the life that you deserve. Now. What I'm gonna recommend you do is click the button below and make sure you subscribe to our channels. I would love to help you accomplish all that you deserve in this life. Uh, register for the, for the webinar that's coming up this week. And again, I am so excited that you spent the time with us. Uh, I hope this video has been eye-opening to you. My name is Bob Schneck, and I can't wait to see you again.